Reclaiming Environmental Wholeness As I mentioned in a previous video, your surroundings have a serious impact on your mental, psychological, emotional, spiritual, physical, career, and social personas. It cuts across the board. You can't help but be affected because the things that you see, touch, taste, smell, and hear all resonate. You're not some sort of free-floating being that can just abstract reality based on some fixed concepts and live your life that way. Your external environment has a big impact on what happens to you internally. It not only impacts you from the outside going in, it also impacts how you respond to your work. It is no surprise that some people who buy very small cars feel that they're capable of only doing a limited number of things. The same applies with people who live in very, very small spaces. Now, this is not a slam on people's income or wealth levels. Instead, it points to the fact that your environment and its physical dimensions, as well as its physical qualities, do have an impact on your relationship with reality. It impacts your perception of your capabilities, capacities, as well as your definition of the good things in life. What makes this really troublesome is that these changes take place over an extended period of time. It's not one of those things that happens overnight. Understand that the physical space that you typically find yourself in plays a bigger role in shaping your internal world than you are aware of. In this video, I'm going to step you through the process of reclaiming environmental wholeness. Instead of subconsciously saying to yourself that, this is just the way things are and there's really not much I can do about it, you reclaim your ability to shape your world and, by extension, trigger internal changes. Clean up physical clutter. The first thing that you can do to take control over your environment and start on the road to achieving environmental wholeness is to clean up physical clutter. This is fairly straightforward. There might be stuff around you that just takes up real estate that you don't really use. You see it, it's gathering dust. You might want to hold a garage sale. You might have stuff on the wall that really doesn't look right. You might want to change those materials. You might have lots of stuff eating up precious real estate in your interior space. You might want to sell off and clear out that stuff. Interestingly enough, the more you clean up physical clutter, the more you free up mental clutter as well. You feel less constrained. You feel that things are more open-ended, that there's a lot more you can do. Also, try to recreate nature in your areas of control. Even if you have a fairly small apartment, you can put in potted plants. You can paint the walls green. You can put up pictures or posters of nature scenes. However you want to do it, you end up recreating nature in interior spaces that you control. This enables your mind to tap into natural signs or signals embedded in nature, which can lead to a sense of wholeness and completion. It definitely feels more natural. You don't feel like you're hemmed in. You don't feel that everything is artificial, synthetic, mechanical, or industrial. Instead, the sense of discovery, adventure, and possibility that most people get when they are out in the open surrounded by Mother Nature is available to you. You just have to be conscientious and purposeful about it. You have to select these cues that you put into your interior space that remind you of the recreational and healing and restorative qualities of nature. Get proper environmental inputs in your daily routine. Intentionally get fresh air. Now, a lot of people might be thinking that they're already getting fresh air. Well, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but in any kind of urban environment, you're not really getting fresh air. You're often getting positively charged ions, and this can have a negative health effect. You need fresh air. You need air that moves, so it's some sort of breeze. Also, try to live in a place where there is a decent enough rainfall, because any kind of precipitation increases the amount of negative ions in the air, which has a more positive health effect on you. I'm not just saying this because it feels good, but it lifts up your mood. Research studies have also indicated that heavier volumes of fresh air increases cognitive efficiency and acuity. Don't neglect the positive impact of clean, fresh air. The same goes with light exposure. Make it a point in your daily routine to expose your skin to light. Previously, people thought that you need morning exposure to sunlight for optimal vitamin D synthesis. It turns out that it really depends on where you live on the planet. The key is to get bright enough sunlight for about 30 minutes to an hour without it being uncomfortable. You might want to adjust this, but try to set up your daily workout routine so you get optimal light exposure. Finally, you should invest in really clean water. While tap water in the U.S. is healthy enough, you might want to invest in proper water filtration technology to make sure that you get super clean water. Also, cut up some cucumbers and put it in water to increase its alkaline levels. Some studies suggest that alkaline water is healthier for you in terms of your body's chemistry. Get in touch with Mother Nature a lot. If you have the budget for it, or if you have the opportunity to do this, you might want to consider investing in a second home in the woods somewhere. Now, ideally, you should get a place out in an area that is heavily wooded, or at least is in a natural state. So if you live in a part of the U.S. that is very arid, exposure to the raw natural desert is good enough. Whatever your particular spot in the U.S. may be, 
Get a second home so you can get away from the city every weekend. Invest in a home that is in a geographic spot that is in a more natural state. The power of balance. Just like with all the other advice in this training, make sure that you don't go to extremes. You don't have to throw away everything in your physical space in the name of cleaning up clutter. You can start slow and take it easy. What's important is that you do it in a very intentional way. You have to start at one particular corner of any interior space and then work your way through. Create a ritual for it. It shouldn't be chaotic or random. You might end up throwing stuff away that you would regret. You might even buy something similar to take its place. It kind of defeats the purpose. So do yourself a big favor and start slow. There's no need to jump in with both feet. Just pick a spot that you're going to clean up and then scale up from there slowly. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.